Let's give God just one more praise. Come on, Jesus. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. The Bible says, as we lift up the name of Jesus, he will draw people in. That's a miracle. If we could get the name of Jesus in our mouths, the power of God will follow. We don't use the name of Jesus as a cuss word. We use the name of Jesus as a praise word. And when we praise him and we just say, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And we start sharing what Jesus has done for us. He's the subject matter. He will show up. His power will be there. And he will begin to touch your life and the lives of the people around you. Just saying Jesus will change an atmosphere. How many understand that? And there's times in your life that you're so hurting and you're so broken and you're so lost. You don't have a lot of prayers. Maybe just you need to just do this. Jesus! And that gets you through. I, 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 I look at the story of Jesus as he walks on the water to his disciples in their toughest time. What's really cool about Jesus, while everybody else is walking away from you in your toughest time, when the money's gone, when, when come on, when things aren't going good, you don't feel very good, there's a lot of people walk away from you. God doesn't walk away from you. He walks towards you. And, and he walks on the storm. You know what that means? That whatever's overpowering you, he has power over. And he says, let me show you. Let me walk on the thing that's freaking you out. Jesus today, come on, is walking on your cancer. He's walking on your depression. He's walking on your anxiety. Come on, he's walking on your past. He's walking on your failure. And he's saying, stop tripping. I got more power than you could ever imagine. Let me... Come on, let me blow your mind. Is there anybody ready for God to blow their mind? Like, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. And he comes walking on the water. And the disciples are freaked out. They're freaked out about the, the storm. Then they get freaked out about Jesus. Because Jesus, I don't know what's going on with these lights, but it doesn't matter. But Jesus is now walking on the water, and they think it's a ghost. And, and then Peter is a crazy one. And Peter says this. And then Jesus says, don't be afraid, it's me. He goes, well, if it's really you, though, ask me to come. And, just, and then Jesus says, come. And he's like, oh, no, what did I do? But he walks on water for a minute. But the storm is still raging. The waves are still coming. The waves are big. He takes his eye off Jesus puts it back on the storm, and he starts sinking. And you know what God is saying tonight? Take your eyes off your problem and put it back on your solution. Taking your eyes off your problem, put it on your solution. The more you look at your problems, the more you look at your insecurities, the more you look at the past, the bigger it gets, and it starts gaining power over you. Stop having faith in your problems and have faith in your Savior. And, and I'll tell you this, Jesus is so cool. Because Peter starts sinking because his focus is shifted. He starts sinking, and then he cries out, Jesus! And Jesus says, come here. Pulls him right out of the water while Peter's drowning. He goes, let's walk back, and let's have a conversation. What happened to you? You started out good, but you got your focus off of me. Some of you right now, it's early in the year, and God says, come on, what happened to you? You took your focus off of me. You feel like you're sinking, but it's okay. Let's, come on, I'm going to pick you up tonight. We're going to start walking. We're going to get back in the boat. Come on, your future we're, is still here. We're going to get to the destination. We're going to cross over. Come on, give God some praise. That same Jesus that walked on water will help you walk on water. Get back in position. Tonight's your night. got three nights. Someone say three nights. Yeah. There's a first night, second night, three, third night. You need every dose of the Holy Ghost. I felt like a rapper right there. You need every dose of the Holy Ghost. You got to serve the most of most, the King of Kings, 
Lord of Lords, the one to die for you, set you free from everything you used to be. All right. But the idea is three nights. I, you got to learn how to do this. You, you got to learn how to follow through on process. One, two, three. Not one, skip one, three. See, most people want results, but they don't want to follow process. If you're willing to do what you've never done before, you'll start getting results that you've never gotten. There's a time you got to organize your schedule for a breakthrough. There's people traveling from outside the state to be here. You got to travel, come on, from San Bernardino, Rialto, Moreno Valley, wherever you're coming from, right here to be here. Come on. God's, come on, God's presence is here. People are watching online because they can't be here. You're here. Someone say three nights. So tomorrow night, we got Vasher Dobbins is coming out from, from T.D. Jake's church. He's going to be here. He's associate pastor. He's going to be here. Then, then we have Jason Lozano Friday. All I'm saying is get ready for every dose that God has for you. How many believe that he's going to give it one dose at a time? You got to get take it all. How many are going to be here tomorrow night? Just start to make a commitment right now and come early to get a seat. I could tell already there's going to be some momentum tomorrow. Right? I always say this. We're kind of just taking off right now. But understand, this plane's taking off. This is going to be a great night. Tomorrow's going to be greater. The third night's going to be greater. So make sure you show up all three and get everything that God has for you because he's preparing you for the greatest year of your life. He's preparing you for the greatest year of your life. Come on, prepare to the max. Prepare to the max. We're going to pray for God to speak to us. And tonight is not just about being inspired. Tonight is about being instructed. We got too many happy, inspired Christians that aren't going nowhere. We're going to get you on track so the power of God can start flowing through you. Stop. See, this is the problem. You're always looking for a man or woman, woman of God that's anointed. And God says, how about me anoint you? Come on, the Holy Spirit's for you. Come on, get in position so you can start seeing a move of God. You don't have to, you don't have to travel to go somewhere because you're the miracle. Come on, you got the power flowing through you. And there's certain things that you can do to get a position. And I'm going to give you some instruction tonight that demands commitment. We got too many Christians that love church to be entertained, but they want no responsibility. The power is not in the, in the entertainment. The, prob, the, the power is taking on responsibility. See, you got to stop trying. See, this is what God is saying. There's going to be a time in your life you're going to have to grow up and feed yourself. Come on, you can't be spoon-fed for the rest of your life and say, I don't feel like I'm fed. God says, feed yourself, daughter. Feed yourself, son. Come on, I've given you my power. I've given you my spirit. I've given you my word. I've given you my instructions. Walk it out, believer. You should be a walking miracle. Not a walking dysfunction. God says, I made you the source of my power. Come on. The world needs some help. I, I don't know where Jesus is. Look at me. I got Jesus in me. Look what he's done for me. What he did for me. He could do for you. I was strung out. I was messed up. I was depressed. I, I was ready to lose my mind. I was ready to commit suicide. And then I met up with Jesus and he changed my life. What he did for me, he can do for you. Give God some praise. We got to start getting ready. You got to start getting ready. This year is not survival year. This year is victory year. This year is harvest year. This year is a year that you're more than an overcomer. This year is a year of overflow. This year is a year of pro. You got to start getting this in your spirit. Someone say amen. amen. You know what that means? I receive it. 
You got to stop rejecting God's word and start receiving it. You don't come here to be critical. You come here to receive. So get some instruction. Is that right? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm going to help you get ready. We got to stop being emotional Christians. I feel good. I don't feel good. So what? Who cares? That's nothing to do with your assignment. You got to start, stop being driven by your emotions. Start being driven by the mission. You got to stop being driven by the emotions and start being driven by the mission. Someone says, I'm on mission. See, you'll never have fire in your life and you'll never be consistent until you get on the mission that you were called to accomplish because if you go, don't have a mission and you don't know your purpose you're always going to be like a come on you're going to be like a leaf in the wind that with no foundation and no roots we're going to have to get this word in our life I know you're going through a tough time but you got to get your come on you got to get your roots in the word get your roots in the mission and God will take care of all the other details seek first God's kingdom all right I'm going to pray because we got to pray to make it today. Yeah. MC Hammer, for you guys don't know what's up. 1980-something. <laughs> but I'm going to pray that God opens your eyes. Amen. we got too many blind Christians. Amen. I'm going to pray that you, you grow up. I'm going to pray that you stop getting ready and just start doing what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean by that? Because some of you guys are in ready mode. When I get ready, when I get ready, when I get ready, Scott says, now. When you say yes to your call, the call will get you ready. You're never ready. Come on. You'll never be ready. Right now is the day to get saved. Right now is the day to get set free. Right now is the day to get delivered. Come on. Right now is the day to say yes to your call. I know you don't feel ready. No one ever feels they're ready. Just say yes and your yes will get you ready. I'm overwhelmed. So what? I am too. Let's go. The vision is bigger than me. It's bigger than my experience. It's bigger than my resources. It's bigger, come on, it's bigger than my help. God's taking me to a place I've never been. And God is saying, you can't get ready for this because you don't even know what it takes. But I know what it takes. But I do know, but I do know this. I've called the right person. I've called you. I didn't make a mistake about that. And if you're partnering up with me, we can get this thing done. All right. Lord Jesus, speak to us tonight, tomorrow night, Friday night, Sunday morning. You're getting your church ready. Father, we, we're not just some church that comes together and just have fun. We're an army. And, and we know our mission is to fight for souls. And you use regular people like us to reach this world. There's around 8 billion people on this earth. We want a billion of them for your glory. Come on, our church, we, we want to influence a billion of them for your glory. And we can only do this all together as a team. But first, we want our family to get saved. Your word says that's for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Father, salvation is not just for me. It's for my children. It's for my grandchildren, it's for my cousin, it's for my mama, it's for my crazy aunt, it's for everybody. And Father, right now, we are on a mission, Father, to make disciples of all nations. And Father, we give you permission, start with me, and then get to my children, and get to my family. Father, use me as a conduit to touch them. Speak to us tonight, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Are you guys ready? Are you ready to make a commitment, a greater commitment that you've ever made to have a greater life and greater results than you've ever had? 
Next level life comes with next level commitment. Let's talk about impartation, what it means. It means the giving and receiving of spiritual gifts. Revelation, vision, instructions, blessings, power, baptism of the Holy Spirit and provision through the means of teaching, instruction, preaching, and, and, and telling. But it comes one part at a time. An impartation is what God says, I'm ready to give something to you. And the impartation actually happens when you receive it. He says, in these next three days, I'm going to give you instruction. In these next three days, I'm going to give you spiritual gifts. In these next three days, I'm going to give you vision. In these next three days, I'm going to give you special blessing. In these next three days, I'm going to, three days, I'm going to empower you. In these next three days, I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In the next three days, I'm going to give you supernatural provision. In the next three days, I'm going to give you prophetic words. Are you ready to receive one part at a time? Tonight's going to be part of it. But I, what I want to do before we dive into the message... I want to speak the prophetic word that God has spoken of our church. This is what God says. This year will be a year of supernatural growth because of the favor that I've placed over your life. Areas that, you've been, that you have been bearing in and unfruitful will begin to produce and create a mighty harvest. Do not be afraid of dreaming big because I am a God that has no limits. Remember that all things are possible for those who believe. I have promised you that I will give you infinitely more than you can ask or think, ask, can ask or think according to my power that is at work within you. The growth will come with specific instructions. If you follow the step-by-step -step instructions that I will give you, you will see a release of my favor that will cause mega growth. Get ready to do more this year than you have done your whole life. Get ready to do more this year than you've done your whole life. Just like Joseph went through, J Joseph went from the prison to the palace. I'm doing the same thing for you this year. I will take you out of obscurity and make you known for my glory. Areas that you have, that you have given your best in and not seen the results that you've expected will finally blossom. The vision will surely come to pass because my word never returns void. It always accomplishes what I send it out to do. Say yes to my will and see my hand of blessing and favor cause you to grow, succeed, and prosper in all you do. The seeds that you've planted will produce the abundant harvest that I promise you. Humble yourselves before me and turn from your sinful ways so that you can experience a river of my love, peace, and abundance flowing to your hearts, minds, and lives. Seek me early in the morning and you will find me. I have been waiting to meet you so I can speak to you. I will reveal myself, my plans and vision for your life. I will show you what is to come and prepare you and your family for the victory in the battle and the supernatural growth that I promise you this day. The harvest is truly ripe and I'm sending you as my labors into my fields to bring in my harvest. As you allow my word to direct your paths, dwell in your hearts, and be proclaimed out of your mouth, you will reap a harvest that will begin in your own homes. You will reap a harvest that will begin in your own homes. You will reap a harvest that will begin in your own homes. You will reap a harvest that will begin in your own homes. You, I'm, I'm just driving this home. You will reap a harvest that will begin in your own homes. Come on, give God some praise if you're looking for a harvest in your homes. The promise of salvation is for you and your entire family. Set time aside daily to meet with me and study my word and pray so that I can spiritually develop and mature you to receive everything I promise you. If you delight in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. The supernatural growth will begin in you and overflow from you to those around you. If you will make your homes a place where my presence is welcome, I will invade it with, with my glory and power. Praise and worship and the teaching of my word in your homes will create an atmosphere where my spirit will touch the hearts of your loved ones and produce a harvest of salvation, deliverance, and supernatural growth in their lives. If you're saying, yes, that's for me, just come on, give God some praise. Says That's for me. Today, what I'm going to talk to you about is this title, this subject, You Will Be Called Great. 
you will be called great. What that means, you're going to be known for something great that happened in your life. Greatness is in your future. Anything that you've seen in the past that was great, God is saying that was just preparation for the greatness and the next level of greatness I'm going to show you in your life. I know I like to drive this home because some of us don't feel very great. But just because you don't feel great doesn't mean that God doesn't have a call of greatness upon you. Great. God desires for us to be great. It's part of the covenant. It's part of the promise. Look at Genesis 12, 1. It says, the Lord has said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your family's father, and go. Someone say, go. Go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. God is saying, I'm going to make you great. You will be called great. I'm going to give you instructions. If you follow my instructions, my instructions will lead you to greatness. Someone say, my instructions, God's instructions will lead me to what? I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you. Does anybody want some blessings? I will make you famous. Does anybody want to be famous? Now, I'm going to tell you this. I know that that word kind of seems negative, but it's not negative because God wants you to make, he wants to make you famous for his purpose. We got too many YouTube sensationalists that are famous for nonsense, but God says they're famous for nonsense. You're famous for purpose. Come on, can God entrust you with his fame for his glory? God is saying, stop resisting fame. Come on, fame and humility with my purpose is exactly what we need today. The church needs to be known for a move of God. The church needs to be known as a source of blessing. The church has to be known as the place where they find the power to overcome their depression. Come on, their anxiety, their destruction. God is saying, you're the church and I'm ready to make you great. So I'm going to say great. I'll make you famous too. And you will be a blessing to others. The purpose of the fame, the purpose of the blessing is to be, to bless others. I'm going to put you in a position to be a blessing. That word great means large in number. Someone say large. You got to stop being infatuated with small. God is not, it's okay to start small, but God says, my call is for you to grow. Go from small to more. How many believe God wants more in your business, more in the church, more in the, more anointing? Come on, more people, more disciples, more ideas, more vision, more money. Larger numbers, someone say intensity, importance, in rank. Authority, mighty, power, and a loud sound. The word great means loud sound. You, you know what it means? Is that no one gonna, is going to be able to ignore you anymore. They're going to have to listen. Like, I don't know what's, what's up with you, but the way you're t t talking to me, the tone that you're, you're not even screaming, but there's something about what you're saying is so deep that I can't ignore it anymore. Come on, is there someone ready to walk in a depth, come on, of greatness that when you speak, people pay attention like, what? They're going to start over here in your conversations at the dinner table and come to your table and said, I heard something there that I couldn't ignore. Can you pray for me? Come on, God's ready to do revival in your life everywhere you go. God is saying, I, I follow me and I'm going to make you great and famous. Our church is going to be famous for his glory. Widespread, re widespread reputation, a name, that is de 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 a name designation of God, renowned, honored, a good name. Someone say good name. A favorable, 
favorable and publicly recognized name, good standing for merit and achievements and celebrated. God is saying God's people are going to be celebrated. I know the world's saying, oh man, we don't want Christians. But when they find out that you're walking into power and you're the one helping them get their breakthrough, they're going to say, I'm going to tell you what, you could talk about the church all day long. But when I was a mess and every one of you guys left me, that church was there for me and they helped me recover. I'm not the same person that I was because after they connected me to Jesus, my Lord and Savior, it transformed my life. All I'm saying, it's good over there. So now, who will be called great in the kingdom of heaven? Now, this is a big question. Um, there's something I'm going to show you tonight. God is saying, I've called you to greatness. But each one of us in this room have a spiritual rank. And not every Christian is in the same rank. In the spiritual realm, you got a reputation. And I want to, we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. But some of you are going to change your name tonight. Because the devil's put names on you. He's called you a failure. He's called you a nobody. He's called you a re reject. He's called you depressed. He's called you lonely. He's called you all kinds of names. Fearful. Done. It's over. Unworthy. Loser. Whatever names he's called, you got to say, we're going to switch names tonight. How many would like to learn how to get my name switched tonight? Come on. I'm not talking your friends, what they call you. I'm talking about what heaven calls you and what demons call you. And we know this because in the Bible, there was some guys named the seven sons of Sceva. I don't even know what that is. It sounds like venereal disease. I got some Sceva, man. Just stay away right now. But these guys went out and they tried to cast out demons. But when they showed up, the demon says this, crazy, the demon says, we don't know you. Who are you? Because we've never heard about you in hell. There was no announcement about you that we should watch out for you. You're not renowned. They're, they're, you have no reputation in the spiritual realm. Why go to church? I know, but you have no reputation in the spiritual realm. Well, I'm a Christian groupie. I go to all the concerts. I know, but you have no reputation in the spiritual realm. I've been to every church in the city. I know, but you have no foundation. You're not rooted. You have no name in the spiritual realm. That means your name carries no weight. Who are you? So it doesn't matter if you have a title of a pastor, a deacon, a prophet, an apostle. Because see, some of you guys are naming yourself. And, God, and this is what God is saying. The name you got don't match your spiritual name. Because in the spiritual realm, you have no name there. So you're worried about going to church and getting a title. And God says, you should be concerned about your spiritual title because it's your spiritual title that's recognized. Because when Jesus showed up, they said, we know who you are. When you show up, they should know who you are. A matter of fact, when you show up, they know who you are. And your name comes from heaven. Now, I'm going to tell you this. You could be a Christian with a weak name. In the spirit. Let's look at the scripture. You'll be called great, though, by the end of the night. I don't know what they're calling you in the spiritual realm, but you'll be called great. In the, come on. Tonight, great. But it's going to come with a commitment. I just want a name change with no commitment. I said, no. Nope. I'm going to want a commitment on change your name. I'll show you my destiny. I'll give you your purpose. But if you're not willing to say yes to the purpose, your name stays the same. 
I don't want to give up the drugs and remain being a drug addict. That's your name. I just want to smoke a little bit of weed. Okay, that's it. You're a pot smoker. That's your name in the spirit. Devil, come on. I got the devil, come out. What? Wait, you, what? You think that marijuana spirit is going to have power over every demon in hell? No. No. You want to remain a fornicator? That's what your name will be in the spiritual. Fornicator. But I'm a member at the way. He goes, I know. A way member fornicator. No power. But I got the way sticker on my car. He goes, that don't matter either. Because what matters is what's in your heart. And I know your secret life doesn't match up with your, come on, doesn't match with your title. And God is saying, come on, it's time for you to start walking worthy of your call. I called you out of the sexual immorality. Come on. I called you out of the addiction. I called you out of the gang banging. Make up your mind and get your new name tonight. Come on. That name is coming from heaven. Stop trying to claim your hood and start claiming your Jesus. Where you from? Who cares? Stop it. Okay. Matthew 5.19. So, if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you'll be called. Take this out. God is saying, dependent on how you respond to the word of God will be your name. You'll be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to tell you what called mean in a, it means in a second. But anyone who obeys God's laws or commands and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So let's just put two categories in, not a hundred. In the spiritual realm, either you're called least or you're called great. Called is interesting because I call my, son, my, my grandson Xander because that's the name we gave him. Xander! He comes running. I call my dog Tiki. Tiki! She don't come. She's just disobedient. My other dog Titus, he'll come. But they respond to their name. The word called. So the word called means to be named. Just think about this. In heaven, they're naming you. Now understand, God's called you great. But if you refuse to obey and teach the commands of the Lord, and I'm going I'm to I'm give you some insight. You're teaching no matter what. You're going to teach people to obey Jesus' commands, or you're going to teach people to disobey. Either way, you're a teacher. Your kids will learn the lesson how you live and what's coming out of your mouth. Someone say this, I'm a teacher. I hope you're teaching the right content. The people that are great are obeying the teachings and teaching the teachings. The people that are great are obeying the teachings and what? I'm going to give you an insight. Obeying is not enough. If you want to be great, you got to obey and you got to be a teacher. Tonight, we're going to raise you up into a teacher. Some of you guys are bored with Christianity because you're not fulfilling your purpose to get the word, learn the word, and teach it to somebody. Until we have teaching and preaching churches, we're going to have weak churches. And I'm not talking about me preaching. I'm talking about you preaching. I'm not talking about me teaching. I'm talking about you teaching. You teach in your home. Come on. You teach at your workplace. You teach in your neighborhood. Whatever atmosphere or place God puts you in, come on. You start teaching by your example, and you start teaching by your conversation, and you start saying, hey, how about having a Bible study at lunch, homie? Because when teaching stops, greatness stops. Before greatness,
teaching happens. You'll see it in scripture over and over. Jesus taught that miracles happen. Mega miracles, mega breakthroughs. People are raised from the dead, but it always happened like this. First, there was some teaching and there was some preaching and then there was some manifestation of Jesus' power. And God is saying, I want to manifest myself into your house, but there's no content. Getting quiet in here. I'm telling you, this is not about being inspired. This is about getting the army ready to reach the world. We're going to be called great. But anyone, but says that anyone who obeys God's laws and commands and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, it's interesting. In the kingdom of heaven are these two groups, the least and the great. The word called means to be named, to be given a name, to, be, to give a name to, to bear a bear a title of or to be called out loud or be announced. Check this out. This is literally what happens when you enter a space. Lisa the Great has just entered the building. Everybody bow. In the spiritual realm, there's announcements when you come into territories and spaces. I didn't know how this worked until I studied this because I told you this story, but I remember going to Las Vegas and that night, a big demon visited my room. And this demon told me, what are you doing here? Somehow, he knew I came. And the reason he knew I came, because I was announced in the realm. When Jesus came, they said, we know who you are. And I'll tell you how they knew who he was, because when he showed up, they didn't know him by his hairstyle. Like, I knew Jesus would look like that. There wasn't like most wanted in hell and say, look, when the guy looks like this, long hair, beard, kind of tan, that's him. They didn't recognize him by his clothes. They didn't recognize him by his look. They recognized him by the announcement. And we get a picture of an announcement when Jesus was baptized. Soon as Jesus was baptized, Jesus, I mean, the father said this, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. When the disciples went to the mountain, a few of them went to the mountain and the glory of God came down. The father said this, this is my son. Listen to him. There's pictures of announcements being made. Every time a king would come into a realm, they would say, Alexander Caesar the Great has just come in. They'd blow the trumpets and the people would recognize and begin to honor him. And what God is saying, I've called you by name. And when you show up to an atmosphere, and you show up to a realm, you will be announced, here he comes, come on, here's Robert the Great, come on, what does great mean? Let's talk about that for a minute. Now, no, let's talk about least for a minute, then we'll get to the great. But the word least means the least importance. Imagine they name you, here's Marco, the least important. And the demon goes, oh, okay, that, we don't have to worry about that guy. <laughs> it also means least in authority, in influence, rank, and excellence. Smallest in size, amount, dignity, and management affairs. Very small, very little. That's him. Why is this person called the least? 
because he obeys the command, disobeys the commands, ignores the commands of Jesus, and teaches others to do so. This person cannot be entrusted with responsibility, cannot be entrusted with authority, cannot be entrusted, entrusted with growth because he doesn't obey and he teaches others to disobey. He's not going to be able to represent and be an ambassador of the king. Until you become an obedient, teaching, believer, understand, you got no rank. Come on, don't get bored with this. Come on, get on, come on. I'm ready to transform your life tonight because God is saying, I've called you to greatness. And before your destiny changes, your name changes. How many would like to get a name change tonight? Like, least the great. The word great, now I, I would hate to be announced like that. There's the least important. <laughs> In heaven, they have to call you something. The Bible says what he wants you to be, but they also call you what you're doing. Not that God doesn't call you to where you want to be and calls not things that though they were, you know, not that they are, though they were. Of course, all that. But you have to understand this. There's also a reality check. When God calls you a sinner, repent. Stop acting like you got power and you can't even submit to the power. The Bible says submit to God, resist the devil. If you're not submitted to God, you have no authority to resist devils because your name is least. Someone's going to get a name change tonight. <laughs> How many want to see great things happen in your life? This year is going to be a year of increase. Come on. This year is going to be a year of growth. But God is saying, come on, you got to follow my instructions. Okay. The word great, I like this word great. Strong. I like that. Announcing. Jerry the Great has just entered this realm. And demons are like, oh, no, not one of those great ones. Because those great ones walk in great authority because they're ambassadors of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. These ones cast out demons. These ones walk in miracles. These ones, oh, come on, turn cities and the world upside down. Not another great one. The word great. You know, it comes from the word megas, or like mega, like mega million. Oh, yeah, okay, Pastor, now I know I'm talking with a lotto. I thought I would kind of just relate to you. Mega. Someone say, strong. strong. It should have said great power. Someone say, great power. Great rank. Great in number. Large. Abundant. Excellent. Important, greatly blessed, big, mighty, and very wide. A lot of territory. God is ready to expand your territory. Come on. God is ready to make you deeper. God is ready to make you wider. And God is saying, when you come into a territory, the demons are going to know. Heaven's going to know. A great one has just entered. A mighty one has just entered. And this is what happens when you come in with your title of greatness. Demons don't chase you anymore. You chase them. Come on, it's time for the church to get liberated from demons of depression, discouragement, and start going out there and start casting out demons. Remove them from territories. But you're going to have to become great. See, that's what happens. You, you want to be like as close to the world as you can, but you want to walk in power. How much, how much can I drink, you know? Can I just drink a little poquito? Just take the edge off? Well, how much anointing do you want? How worldly you wanna be? 
How kingdom-minded do you want to be? How powerful do you want to be? Maybe it's time for you to start. Stop asking those dumb questions. And you can start saying, God, what do I need to get rid of in my life? So I can, come on, I can begin to obey you and get that title so we can do some business. Well, how far can we go when not going all the way? Like making out, is that good? Long as we don't go all the way. Is there anointing for that? And you want power. You can't have power if you're not willing to be like Jesus. And whatever God's asking you to get rid of so you could change your title tonight, God is saying, I'll help you get rid of it. I just need someone that's willing to say, you know what? I'm tired of being the least. I'm tired of not walking in power. I'm tired of not growing. I'm tired of, no, of having no authority. I'm tired of the devil chasing me everywhere I go. We're going to flip this script tonight. I'm going to make up my mind to serve God, give it all up, and I'm going to start obeying him and everything he says, and I'm going to become a teacher. Stay with me. I'm a teacher. teacher. Yeah. Come on, we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Teacher. Important. So what is the determinant factor? Just two things. I'm going to obey the commands of Jesus and teach others to do the same. And if you're obeying the commands of Jesus, you're learning them. Someone say, learn them. Learn. Obey them. Obey. And teach them. God says, at that point, I will change your title. And when you show up, you'll be announced as great. Come on, man. It's time for you to take responsibility and be the spiritual priest in your home. Stop letting your, come on, letting your woman, come on, take the lead. You're supposed to, come on, be a leader in your home. Come on, be a teacher in your home. Be a priest in your home. Say, baby, I don't know, I, I know things have been going a little crazy, but I'm going to flip this thing. And we're, every Saturday morning, before we go out and do our thing, we're going to have a Bible study with every one of the kids. We're going to change this thing because this family is going to be great, and it's going to start with me. I'm going to start obeying and teaching God. God's Word. And on Sunday, we're going to be in church. On Thursday and Friday, we're going to be in church because that's what God has called us to do. Things are changing up in here. Stop, stop expecting change without repentance. Lord, change me. Cambia mi vida y corazón. Even bilingual. Hallelujah. Quiero más y más de ti. I want more and more. You go, no, you don't. You want more and more of your sin. Go on, son. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to get you in the place of your call to be great. Come on, you've been called to do some great stuff, and it starts today. Stop waiting. Today's my day to receive a title change. Now, greatness started when I was a little boy. So I started when I was a little boy. My mom trained me to be great. She did. There wasn't a week that my mom didn't have a Bible study with me in the home. My dad wasn't serving God. She goes, well, he ain't serving God. We're going to serve God. She was always involved in the children's ministry because she was there training me talking to me, teaching me the word. Stop expecting a return on an investment you never made. The church can't do what you're supposed to do. We're just supposed to partner up with you. I remember my mom taught me the word. At 12 years old, I knew the word. At 12 years old, I remember my grandma kicked me out of her house because she was a Jehovah Witness. And I began to share scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. I was not being rude. I said, no, this is what the Word of God says. This is what the Word of God says. Let's turn right here. This is what the Word of God says. This is what the Word of God says. She got so frustrated, she kicked me out of her house. 
And I was at 12. I was trained to be great. I remember in our church. I remember in our church. Our children's ministry, which, which wasn't big. We only had like 15 people in the church. We had a Sunday school teacher. And she got so frustrated with the kids, she started cussing. You blankety blank kids, come and sit your butts down, all kinds of stuff. I was in that class. So I told on her. I snitched on her. Said, we can't have no teacher like that. That's not what the word of God said. But I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I thought we were just going to get another teacher. So they started looking through all the church to find a teacher. Nobody wanted to do it. So my mom, she goes, I know a teacher. It's my son. He goes, he's only 12 years old. He knows the word. Give him all those kids. He'll teach them everything I taught him. And I remember my mom says, you're the new Sunday school teacher. I'm the new Sunday school teacher of all the kids. She goes, all the kids are under your authority right now because you obey God. You know the word of God. And let's get ready for some greatness. Let's get ready for some growth. Let's get ready for some mega things ready to happen. Stop underestimating yourself and stop underestimating your kids. I remember I started teaching them. They all come in. I go, okay, we're going to turn to this story in the Bible of David and Goliath. Let's break this down. And the kids started paying attention and they started learning. But you know who really started learning? Me. Because once you accept the responsibility to obey the word and teach the word, the person that's going to grow the most is you. You're going to start developing into your purpose. You're going to start developing into your greatness. But for sure this, come on, demons are going to recognize you. Angels are going to recognize you. Heaven's going to back you up. God is saying, I'm looking for someone to confirm what they say. And if they'll just preach my word and if they will share my word, I will come in and show up because this is a partnership. It's a co-mission. That means it's going to be me and you facing the world. I just need someone that's made up their mind who they're going to serve and what's going to come out of their mouth. There's somebody here saying, that's me. I don't know if I feel like I'm ready, but I'm listening to this word and I'm ready to say yes. I'm ready to say yes to God's will and I'm ready to say yes to God's purpose. Give God a little bit of praise. He's worthy. Okay. Sunday, I'll do part two of this. And you will be called great. Man. All I'm saying is, guys, Jesus wants to work through you. But you have to give him something to work with. Some of us need to get over ourselves and get back on mission. You know, all I'm saying is this, guys. I didn't wait till I was perfect to do God's will. I just said yes. You know how you get to your destiny? You yes your way into it. You don't wait your way into it. You yes your way into it. It's time to serve. Okay, I'll serve. Do a Bible study in your home. Okay, let's do that. Stop treating like the, the Bible as a suggestion and understand there's commands. And then you wonder why you don't get the results of the Bible because you're not following it. That's like you want a really beautiful cake like it's on the cover, but you don't, you, you don't want to put the eggs. I don't feel like the eggs. I don't, I don't feel like I feel like, I don't even feel like mixing it. You know, mixing it's called process. I know you don't feel like mixing it, but if you don't mix it, you won't have a cake. All the ingredients are there. Come on. Every breakthrough is there, but you're going to have to do some mixing. Tomorrow night, you're going to have to do some mixing. Come on. Today, you got to do some mixing. At home, you're going to have to do some mixing. Come on. Get that thing ready to go into the oven. And then he says, leave that in the fire long enough to come out and be just like that picture. God is saying, I got something great for you. I want to make you famous for my glory. I want to give you my power, but I need someone ready to get in the mix. Is there anybody ready to get into the mix? Come on, get in the mix. Now, I'm looking for some people ready to get in the mix. And we're not going to be all emotional about this. We're just going to make a commitment. 
if tonight you're saying, man, I've been a Christian a long time, but I've been like a disobedient Christian. I'm actually scared of demons. The truth is, I'm not scared of no demon. Like lit none. I've had demons tell, oh, we're going to kill you. I go, no, you're not. Stop it. <laughs> you're already defeated. You're underneath my feet. Greater is he that is with me than he's in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know it. Jesus died and resurrected from the dead. He put you underneath my feet. And if you keep talking, I'm going to start stepping on you. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to call heaven to break loose on you. Stop messing around. You're going to get hurt up in here. Come on. Is there anybody who wants to start getting some authority in the spiritual realm? I remember, <laughs> I remember um, it was late at night on a Wednesday night like this. And some guy comes up. And he's the last person in line. Everybody went home. All the ushers went home. All the musicians went home. Um, my armor bearers went home. Everybody went home. And I'm left with this one guy I'm praying for. I didn't know who I was praying for. I found out I was praying for a hitman. He murdered like 20, 30 people. So I'm praying for him. Just pray. Can you pray for me? I want to give my life to Jesus. I go, let's do this. He's giving his life to Jesus. And all of a sudden, when I'm praying for him, I hear a growling. Of, I go, okay, let's pray. We're good. <laughs> and I go, hey, 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 hey. I go, hey, hey, are you all right? <laughs> he goes, um, he goes, I'm a murderer. And I go, so what's going on? He goes, I'm hearing something right now telling me to murder you. That's what he told me. I'm by myself in the hood on 4th Street. Ain't police even going to show up there, Dad. You better have some authority. Come on. They better know who you are. They, they, I'll tell you this. The demon was manifesting because he knew somebody was authority there. He wanted to hide, but he couldn't hide anymore. See, when you show up with a, a title of greatness and you start preaching the word of God, demons aren't going to be able to hide out in your family anymore. They're going to start manifesting not to kill you, but for you to cast them out. I go, for, don't worry, I, go, I go, bro, don't worry about it. Greater is he that is in me than he's in the world. We got more power here. There's angels all around here. You ain't going to do nothing. We just going to cast this demon out. Are you in agreement? Let's cast this spirit out. He goes, let's do this. So we just spent a little time and we cast that spirit out, that spirit of murder. Nobody died that night, but that demon. And God is saying, I want to empower my church again. Okay. Get ready for tomorrow night. One, two, three. Not one. Get the whole cake and get the whole mix. Well, I don't feel like I got anything tonight. I feel like just something starting, but I'm not sure what it is. You just need some more mixing. That's all. Don't worry about it. Okay. But tonight, if you're saying, Pastor, I'm ready to give up disobeying God and being a teacher of wickedness, and understand this, you're teaching, good or bad, but you're teaching. And you're tired of being the least. And you want to get ready to walk in power tonight. Change your name. It's not a shame to be struggling with something. It's a shame to stay there. For some of us, pornography has stolen your title. See, the devil doesn't just want you to lust. He wants authority over you. So you think this is just an exchange. I'm not hurting nobody. You're, it's what's happening. You're hurting yourself and you're hurting your rank. And whatever you're struggling with, you come the way you are. He's able, the great one, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, can set you free to be the great person you're supposed to be. But you got to say, I'm ready. So I got two calls. One, you're ready to give up your, that sin and disobedience. And I'm ready to change my name tonight. But with that name change, you're ready to commit to start teaching the word with a circle. And this is what I want. I want to see, it'd be great to have 500 homes 
that decide tonight. We're going to have a Bible study in our house after this week, every week, till Jesus comes back. Is there anybody tonight that's ready to say it and say, how we're going to do that? Our growth book that we're going to be able to order, you're going to go through it. We're going to help you do that. We're going to give you training next, so I'm going to say training next Thursday. You're going to sign up tonight and we're going we're gonna to help you get the growth book. You're going to get that book. It's so easy because you're just going to follow the steps. There's, there's six steps or five steps. Just go through it and you're done. There's questions already there. What did you learn today as we read the scripture? And your kids are going to say, I learned this. Your wife's going to say, I learned this. Your friend's going to say, I know this. Your co-workers are going to say, I learned this. And that's it. You just facilitate it. But you're going to allow yourself for God to use you to start explaining, get an understanding. You're going to start preparing for that, that Bible study. And it's going to transform your life. And as soon as you become a teacher, you just change your title. And when you start showing up to a location, you got backup. And this is what's going to happen. The kingdom of heaven is going to back you up. And at, at the end, de demons are going to know who you are because you're going to start recognizing who you are. And they're going to start fleeing from you instead of hanging out with you. Amen. Come on. You guys ready for this? Come on. Are you ready for this? Okay. How many are ready to... You, one, both things probably. One or the other. I don't care which one. Maybe you've been obedient, but you're not teaching. Or maybe you've been disobedient, and I, I got to do both of them. I got to start obeying, and I got to start teaching. I want you to raise your hand and say, I'm ready. To, I will train you. I'm ready to do a Bible study in my home. Stand up if you're ready to say that. Come on. Stand up right now. I'm ready to do a Bible study in my home. Come on. I'm ready to do a Bible study in my home. I, I, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I'm, I'm willing to say yes. Come on. You got to say yes. Because, come on, God's calling more than our standing up. God is saying, come on, there's not a Bible study in your home. And God is saying, because there's no word in your home, there's nothing for me to work with. God is saying, come on, we got to get the word back in your homes. Because after the word shows up, the power shows up. Come on, I'm still rallying somebody. Because God is saying, I'm trying to get into your house. I want to reach your kids. Guys, come up. Those that raise your hands, come up. Come up. If you're thinking I can, come, just come up real quick. Come on. We're, we're going we're gonna to get an army going here. Come on. Your title's going to change tonight. You don't have a temptation problem. This is what you got. You got a mission problem. Because when you get on the mission, the temptation is going to run from you. Well, I don't think we could do it. You could do it. All of us could do it. I was 12 years old. I did it. Come on, let's make some room up here. Let's make some room. Let's make some room. Come on, let's everybody come up here. Come on, we're going to have, if you're single, you're going to have a Bible study with your kids. If you're, if you're single and you don't have kids, you're going to have a Bible study with your friends. If you don't have friends, you're going to have to make some friends. That's all right. Guys, it's going to be awesome. This is not hard. Are you willing to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? That's it. Let's do it. A disciple of Jesus Christ is just somebody that studies the word. I made a decision, first of all, follow Jesus. So that means that you're going to have to unfollow your sin. Come on, we've got to make some more room up here. Let, let, let's, um, let's make some room, more room. Oh, it's going to get crazy here. You're not just going to commit, you're going to do this. Come on, church. There's a revival starting tonight. Come on, there's a shift in heaven. There's a shift in hell. Come on, Satan did not want this preaching coming because he didn't want you to get the insight that God is saying, I've called you to greatness. You know you've been a Christian and there's something missing. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm trying and God says it's purpose. You're waiting. Maybe if I just go to school, Go to school, but don't wait to go to school four years from now and say, now I got my degree in theology. Maybe I can teach some. None of those disciples had any theology degree. They just had a willingness. Someone said, be willing. All right. I don't know how many people are up here, but we might be near that 500. Okay. Christian. Okay, there it goes. TheWayConnect.com. Look at that. We're going to leave it up there. After we pray, you got to do this. Sign up yourself 
for training on Thursday. It's going to be Zoomy. Zoom, not Zoomy, Zoom. Okay? Um, and if you can't Zoom, you don't know how to do that, we're going to send you a link. Get a friend that knows how to Zoomy, and they'll help you Zoom in, okay? We're going to change your life forever. It's going to start tonight. How many are ready to repent of your sins? Like, I'm done. Come on. I'm done. I'm done. Come on. That's it. Awesome. 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 You know what I love? I love every single one of you that are up here. I love seeing men that are up here too. Guys, I, I, just so you know this, I can't want it more than you. You got to want it. You know why I say you got to want it? Because saying yes to a call doesn't mean that you're not going to start getting resistance. So say with me, I'm ready to go to war. And the first person you got to conquer is you. Yes. Well, I, 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 making excuses. This is not about feeling it. It's about committing to it. When, when Jesus called the disciples and says, come follow me. They just left everything and followed him. It wasn't like, I feel goosebumps. Come on, it's time to start being mature Christians that you're not waiting for a goosebump to move you. The Word of God moves you. You guys ready? In heaven, they're smiling right now because you're going to be announced in a different name and tone after tonight. What's your name? Alexa. The Alexa, I like that. Everyone, pay attention. Tonight, there's been a name change. From Alexa, the least, to Alexa, the great. She's coming. Come on, Alexa. Come on, Alexa. All of heaven is now backing her up. Name. Victor. Victor. Everyone, order in the court. We are declaring a name change from the kingdom of heaven at this moment. Silence! Tonight, we are changing Victor's name from Victor the Least to Victor the Great for the rest of his life. Come on, that addiction, that problem, that depression will never get a hold of him again. Are you guys ready? Okay. Supernatural things are going to start flowing out of this. The biggest miracle is this. You committed to follow Jesus and committed to obey his word and committed to teach his word. Everything else will fall into place. Stop tripping. Just start, start obeying and start teaching. And get rooted in the church. Get planted in this church. This is a great church to grow. There's a great church to be disciple. We're going to be here until Jesus comes back. We're ready to go. All right? I'm not going nowhere. Let's do it. Come on, let's grow. All right, let's, I'm going to pray for you right now. Lift up your hands. Father, right now, I just lift every person here tonight. And I just thank you, Lord. Father, I can't touch them physically, every one of them. But it doesn't matter. You already touched them spiritually. This word has penetrated their heart. They never thought that they'd be up here tonight. They didn't even know what was wrong because they already made a decision to go to church. They already made a decision to confess you as their Lord and Savior, but there was something missing. And tonight you cleared it up that what was missing is that you have not taught my word and I've called you. I've not only called you to be saved. I've called you to represent me. I've called you to be my ambassador. I've called you to be my representative. I've empowered you my spirit to be a witness. I didn't empower you with my spirit just to hang out and be entertained and go to church. I empowered you to change the world and right now father i just thank you lord that there's a father god there's a baptism of your spirit now holy spirit come on receive someone say receive 
I receive the baptism of your Holy Spirit and power to be a witness for you, Jesus. I repent of all my sins. I repent, Lord. Cleanse me. Deliver me. Fill me. Empower me. I thank you, Jesus. I renounce every spirit of darkness off my life, off my family. In the name of Jesus, I'm brand new. My name has changed tonight. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. I'm your student, Lord, but also I accept the call of my life to teach your word to my family. I'm going to set a date. My family's going to show up and I'm going to teach. Tonight's my night. I am no longer least. My name has changed to great to powerful, to authority, to provision. I thank you, Lord. It happens tonight. I receive my new title in the spirit, and I will walk according to my call. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Come on. instructions we're gonna go far I'm coaching you right now we're an army will you stick with me so we could do this together I promise you I'm coaching you to greatness okay I'm gonna be here I'm gonna give you instructions I'm gonna seek God okay these are the instructions army we're gonna go attack that mountain let's go and then we saw run to that mountain and just conquer territory in Jesus' name. Are you guys church? Way Rural Outreach. Are you ready to be known as a great church? Come on. A famous church. That's disciple in the world. Come on. You're going to be part of something bigger than you can ever imagine. Come on. Let's sing this song of victory right now. We're going to amp up. Come on. We got to go up. Because it's victory time. But I need you to right there. QR. TheWayConnect.com. And you're going to sign up for uh to do a dg or discipleship group small group and you sign up we'll help you with the rest and then you show up and then you're gonna pick a date you're gonna start it even if you have to start it with your cat and your dog you do it all right don't let them flake you out of your purpose none of them showed up you have your bible study and then you just keep having it just like church Make your home a church. We're open for service at 10 o'clock Saturday morning and everybody's going to show up. We're going to have church whether you show up or not. People are going to start showing up. Amen. Let's do this. And then we'll dismiss and ready for tomorrow.